Welcome to my engraving studio. I'm Kari Greger, the artist engraver. Glad you could join me today. In this video, I am hand engraving the frame of a Colt third generation single action army pistol. Let's get into it. I have this wooden jig that fits into my ball vise, my um, GRS ball vise. I use hot glue, hot glue gun, and use that to secure the metal into the vise. It holds so well and it's easy to remove, as you will see. I'm getting started with the left side of the frame. I start drawing. Put my white paint on and then we have the circle template. The circles will be where the scroll will swirl. And you can see I'm making notes there on my little uh, post-it notepad. And then I go back in and draw inside of the scroll. Getting the swirl of the scroll is the important part. It's a, it's a very interesting shape because it just con consistently reduces on itself. You know, it gets smaller as it swirls around and there is a mathematical equation that has to do with that. So this is a mathematical thing that we find in nature that happens perfectly. And of course, scroll is a designed, it's a designed foliage. So here the sketch is complete. I've added in all the bits. At some time, I'm gonna do a, a video just on how to draw scroll. I snap a couple of pictures and sent that off to the owner. And he says, yes, go ahead and cut it. So that's what I'm going to do. Once I have that approval, I can get in there with my engraver and cut the design. The thing about cutting the sides of the gun is the metal topography, I guess you could call it. I can only go certain ways because that ball on the back, you know, the back part of the frame of the, you know, the cylinder, it, see, I can't come all the way around because the ball's in the way. So you have to decide how you're going to attack every design depending on where that ball is. So I had to come at two ways to get that little circle at the back of the uh, design engraved. Well, don't fret about that, Pilgrim. I've sped this up. As I'm engraving, I am adjusting the, the bevel, the angle of the cut with my right hand as I hold the uh, Lindsay Air Engraver and I'm adjusting that, the angle of the cut, the, where the bevel lies with my right hand. With my left hand, I am rotating the vise and moving the piece into the graver. And with my foot, I am applying the gas. I'm giving the, the uh, speed of the hammer inside the graving instrument. So there's a lot of coordination going on this piece is a real colt. It's not a replica. It's not a Cimarron or Uberti or any of those other kinds. So that means the frame is hard. I tell you, I have done these before. When they do the case colored hardening, there's something different about it. I mean, whether they actually use the, the carbonized bone or I'm not sure what their recipe is for doing the case colored hardening but this is a hard metal and I can cut it with the uh, cobalt carbide bit but it will chip so you will see throughout this video sharpening the hardest metal that I have for engraving is this cobalt carbide bit or graver when I'm engraving that hard metal it causes many chips it causes it just it doesn't just go dull it'll flake off and it'll chip and so i have to sharpen and i have to sharpen and i have to sharpen <laughs> it just goes on and on this little piece with the leaf design that is underneath the case colored hardening is is a different kind of metal this is going to be like the the barrel or the backstrap 
it's much nicer to cut. I just have to say that. <laughs> it's much easier to cut. When I'm back into the case-colored hardening, it is, it is a bear. I just have to say, you have to really be aware because your uh, graver will chip and you have to really be quick on your feet because otherwise it'll skate across the surface and scratch or, or you're going to be plowing a huge trough. You know, those are the two results. So you have to be really aware when you feel that it's not as smooth and then you have to sharpen. Well, good luck, Pilgrim. Sharpen, sharpen, sharpen. All right, let's take off the white paint and see what the result is. I do feel a little burr, so I have to go back in. The engraving should feel smooth. None of those little burrs, little raised metal areas. They just were not completely cut off. Baba. Yes, sir. Proceed, sir. Well, this looks good. Now we're going to do the ball and the front strap and then the hammer. Those are the parts that I have to get done while it's glued in this position. I take a snap of it and send that off to the owner so he can see the results of this first cut on the frame. Here is the drawing of the front strap. It's a checkered pattern that is quite popular with Western engraving. It's relatively easy to cut. It's, you have to be able to do straight lines. That's all I can say. <laughs> You've got to be able to do straight lines. I can see that I'm struggling there. There's something up. It's just not, well, you know, sharpen, sharpen, sharpen. The rules of cutting case-colored, hardened, bone hardened. Sharpen, sharpen, sharpen. If you're interested in getting some engraving done, you can start the process by sending me an email. The address is in the description box below the video. All those checkering lines are cut. A little drop of water removes the white paint and we have a nice checkered surface. And then we sharpen. This pattern of the checkering has a little dot inside each of the squares. And it looks pretty good. Nice. Here is the drawing on the ball. You can see it's sort of a stylized flower or a sundial. You can see it better with the snap. That's what I sent to the owner and he replied, looks great. And he gave me permission to start cutting. So that's what I do. And once again, this is really hard, hard metal you have to be able to hold it steady and engrave on a curve. And look at that. Look at that. We've got a great, nice curl. Oh, it's so nice to see that coming off of this hard, hard, case-colored hardened metal. If the graver is chipped, it can get away on you pretty quickly. You really have to know the feel of the graver and when it's going to go because then you have to sharpen <laughs> before it makes a slip. Sharpening improves the control. You're not going to have accidents if you keep that tool sharp and sometimes you just do a couple of lines and then you have to sharpen. Here we got a nice close-up shot doing the petals of this stylized flower or sundial. It looks like a sundial because it's got all these radiating lines out, which has to be very carefully measured. Here you see what I mean about the all the little lines that are radiating out from the center of this um, stylized sundial. You have got all these little bits to carve into it. And then we sharpen. Sharpen, sharpen, sharpen. Are you enjoying this video? Please share it. Tell people what you think. It's really appreciated if you do that. This stylized flower or sundial has a few dots on it and so I'm putting those on with the dot punch. 
Let's take the white paint off and see how it turned out. Look at that. That's pretty nice. I don't do much dot punch work on this because once again, it is super hard and it'll just flatten my dot punch. I've got one that I, I use just for this extra hardened metal. Now we're going to do the hammer. I know you don't often see engraving on the hammer, but I am going to do something special that this owner of this piece requested. It's an eagle's head. And I just draw it on because I think, oh, look at the shape of the, the hammer. It looks like a looks like an eagle's head or it looks like a bird's head. So let's draw on it. I've split up the engraving of this piece into shorter videos by part. I should mention that you don't have to get the whole piece engraved at one time. You can start with a cylinder and then a back strap and go on to the rest. It's kind of a way of spreading out the cost. It's something to consider. Now, once I get this eagle's head all sketched on here, I take a nice snap of it and send that off to the owner. And the owner says, I very much like the eagle. It's perfect. With his permission, I am going to cut this eagle head on the side of the hammer. This has to be replicated on the other side. The hard part about cutting the hammer is that it moves. It's got a little bit of play. So when you put the pressure of the, the gravy, you could just see it just came up there. You know, when I, when I release the pressure, put the pressure on, it, it moves. And it moves a little bit while you are engraving. It's not as obvious. But it means that you have to really press down on it to get a cut because it's moving a little bit and it moves away from the blade. So some of this, you can see I'm putting my finger underneath there to try and hold it still. The metal is not the same as the case colored hardened metal, so it is a little softer. Let's see what that looks like once we get the white paint off. That's pretty nice. Now I am going to wax. Renaissance wax is the best way to prevent rust because I have opened up the steel. I have cut through the case colored hardening. This steel is subject to oxidation. So as soon as I cut something, I will cover it with the Renaissance wax, polish it up, and it looks great. Now off to the freezer. Once the glue is frozen, it contracts and you can pull a piece right out of it. What do you think of this jig for my vice? Comment below. I really like it. My husband made it for me. He's very creative. It's got this piece of wood to go into the vise and then a thinner piece of plywood. He rounded the edges so I'm not going to snag my fingers or get splinters. It's really great. Put it into the vise and tighten here. Now, at first I wasn't sure that I wanted it to be this big, but I have found that I can glue so many different sizes of pieces into this and it holds so well. Plus, nice that he rounded the corners here because I don't have to reach underneath when I'm working on top to engrave. I can grab the sides and then I know how far away it is, you know, it's not going to hit me. I can feel how the distance and I can move the vise like this and I can tilt it, whatever. It's, it's just really nice. You know, tell me in the comments below of some jig that you came up with that you really enjoy having. It's, it's a great tool. Several hours or even overnight and out comes a cold hard steel piece. You can see the frost all over it. Now watch this. Just like that. Pops right out. Now I have glued down the other side, put on the white watercolor paint, and I'm drawing the other side. Done already the, um, the scroll. 
here it is all snapped and that's sent off to the owner. The sketch is good. Go ahead and cut it. Uh, he commented before that it looks beautiful. Well, that's in reference to the cut picture that I will have sent along with it. So when we get into the engraving part, a lot of things overlap. So I send what the finished work, a picture of what the finished work looks like once it's out of the vise. And, and then I send also a sketch that's upcoming that needs to be approved. So that's why the uh, two kind of comments on that. This cut is pretty long. It's not that troubling because it does have a screw in the middle of it. But as I come around, I am not going to be able to completely come around, I don't think. Let's watch this one and see. Yeah, I'm going to be able to finish it before I, my hand gets to the gate. Oh, just barely. <laughs> and we have to sharpen. Yes, we must continue to sharpen, sharpen, sharpen. We just keep going and sharpening. And then it's time to take off the white paint and see how it turned out. Ta-da! Yeah, that looks pretty good. See? Isn't that pretty? I'd like to have that, huh? You bushwhacking hamstringer. I'm not doing the dotted background in the piece because um, it would just ruin my dotted punch. This this is just far too hard. Now you get to see a little bit more of the drawing on the gate. The same kind of sundial design is going to be used on this side as well kind of have to be aware of where the gate opens and all of that. I have to make sure that I've gotten it centered. Wouldn't that be horrible if it wasn't on, in the middle and you've got this radiating geometric pattern? Oh. <laughs> so there we go. Just finishing up the sketch and I'll snap a picture of it and send that off to the owner. He says, perfect. Go ahead and cut it. So that's what I will do. You can see I have got a little bit of extra glue on the inside of, you know, a couple of little extra dots. I put them on the seam so that it would hold the gate because once again, this is a moving part. There, you can just see when I released, it bounced up. I'm gonna have to put some more glue on there because that those little dots on the one side are not holding. So I've got to put some more hot glue in to hold this gate steady because it is becoming impossible to cut. It's not the softer metal that's in the hammer. It's this case colored hardened metal and it's moving. It's kind of hard to control and we have to sharpen because it chips easily. You can see I really put this vise and this uh, jig that I've gotten into uh, contortions to get it to cut. Got offered 120 for this Colt. Want to try it out? Now I'm going to just show you the next few drawings. I've got the the front checkering, the other side of the hammer with the eagle head, and um, a starburst. I'm going to put that underneath the checkering on that side. You see, I already cut the checkering and I'm cutting the starburst. It's done drawn with the oval template so I can tell how far out the lines of the starburst are supposed to go. So a couple of oval templates to show the start and the stop of where the lines are. You're not going to see that oval mark in it. This starburst has a single dot that everything radiates from. So you've got to get it right in the center and I hit it a couple of times to make a good indent. There, nice and sparkly. I've got more pictures of pieces I've done on my website, theartistengraver.com, on Instagram and Facebook. Check the description below for links. It goes into the freezer several hours or overnight until it is hard frozen. <laughs> After it's frozen, we take it out of the freezer and pop. 
it comes off of the jig. I've got two pictures of the top strap. I drew the leafy border and this was sent off to the owner and with his approval, here we go, cutting the top strap. I do really like this trim. It is quite decorative. Very nice. And pulls on the whole theme. I've got the piece clamped into the vise and rotating it. Now watch this. I really like having a chair on wheels. For this purpose, I have to get out of the way. <laughs> As I come around, I push back my chair so that I can make the round. And we are dealing with the case colored hardening. So sharpen, sharpen, sharpen. Back in here and coming around the other way. And having to move the chair back again. Okay, we're going to take the water and rub it off. There we have it. Looks good. Now I have to draw the other side. Magic of the camera, putting it in there. We have the one side and here we have the sketch on the other side. And this is repeated, so I don't have to send this off for approval to the owner because I... I'm just duplicating it. Sharpen, sharpen, sharpen. This is kind of a good angle. You can see coming around, coming down the top there. And, and there we go. We've got a great little piece of metal. I am making a good cut. This hard metal is not going to beat me. Next video will be an easier part of the gun. Next video will be on how we handle the back strap of this Colt. There is an interesting manufacturing irregularity that we solved with design. Click the subscribe button and hit the bell so you will be notified when that video is posted. Sometimes it looks like it's a little bit of a wrestling match when you're working with a gun because we have to be aware of the barrel I have to make sure that my um, air hose that is connected to the air engraver does not catch on the barrel or on the hammer. Um, it's just a lot of back and forth and awareness of where everything is moving. It's amazing that I can keep the gun in the focus of the camera at all. Sharpen, sharpen sharpen. Here I am getting ready to engrave. Now I wrap the air engraving hose around my arm that helps keep it out of the way of the barrel and of the hammer. And then let's give it a good start. Check, make sure everything's tight on the graver. Make sure that it's screwed on, the bit is screwed in. And then we can get going and start engraving. A little bit of water and rub with the cloth. Take off the white paint and the pencil marks. There we go. It's beautiful. Silver shining through the case colored hardening. Oh, I feel a little bit of a burr there. I'm going to have to come in and clip that burr off. Doesn't take much. And there we have it all nice and smooth. Of course we have to apply the Renaissance wax. Seal in the exposed steel so that it doesn't oxidize. Renaissance wax friends. That's the frame of this Colt third generation single action army pistol. Shoot me an email if you are interested in getting some gun engraving for yourself. I can ballpark an estimate for you. It makes a great gift to get or to give. Click this link for more ideas about pistols and this link for the seven steps of getting your gun engraved. See you next time.